Hey, very good morning and good evening, everyone. Welcome back. <clears throat> so in our last session, we were discussing about here. We were understanding um, how we would like to proceed, by the way, which is, uh, um, you know, we understood like, you know, so there is a business running and business is going to you know generate some our business is actually making some web applications right so that's what we talked about and post that so this earlier used to be in waterfall model and all we came to the agile by the way in agile by the way so our roles and responsibilities of a as a devops engineer we end up dealing with majorly two things ensure our software is really smoothly so how smooth you release a software so that means like you're using google.com Maybe you're not seeing any downtime, by the way, right? But continuously, the development team behind the scene will be doing some changes, okay? And those changes are getting impacted to you. Maybe it is a bug, It is maybe it is a feature, it's an enhancement, whatever it is, they'll be doing continuously behind the scene. And you're not actually seeing those particular changes, by the way. But however, they will do continuously, right? So that means they're doing the things very smoothly, by the way. So you're not actually seeing the impact of the things. And also after that, so once after the release is done, so you need to ensure that things are running smoother, by the way, as well uh, on the overall picture, by the way. So maybe in the bigger organizations, this role might get into uh, split into some other area, by the way. But however, but however, um, <clears throat> but however, uh, Generally considering, by the way, so it should be part of your role as well. Okay, so we consider both the things. And both the things pointing to, okay, something running the software. And where do we run the software is actually on the servers, by the way. Right? So we are going to we are going to run on the servers. And these servers are not the physical servers, like I mentioned. When you go to the cloud and all, you're going to get a servers, by the way. So it's all virtual servers. Okay, and uh, so that's where when you talk about as a server or a virtual machine or a machine or a node, you know, whatever it is, these are all mostly VMs only. 99.99% will be VMs that we're dealing in today's world, not the physical machine. Okay, so that is where we discussed. And there is certain operating system that runs, um, there's certain operating system that um, that runs on this particular virtual machines. And in the enterprise world, it is actually Red Hat family, okay? Yesterday we went ahead and seen the different distributions of, uh, different distributions of Linux. And we have seen like, you know, so Red Hat has one and there are many, uh, you know, so sub threads or sub branches, okay? Uh, Substreams inside that. And CentOS is one of that, which is a downstream project and uh, which they copy it and release it. But however, there is a slight difference happened. Okay, so what is that difference actually after IBM acquisition, uh, recently, like almost like two years back, what we used to do is earlier RHEL, which is Red Hat product used to come. And uh, so that used to point to CentOS. Now what they have done is, and again, CentOS, like I was mentioning yesterday, CentOS is also funded by Red Hat only. Okay, all the time because there is a business involved by the way. So CentOS they're giving for free, but however, while giving for the free, they can reach to the maximum customers for using it. And they will identify the issues in earlier by the way, okay? Maybe every time the paid customer may not come for an issue, but a lot of, you know, so a lot of free people who is using this particular software, they'll try to report the issues to the community. Hey, this problem, that problem and all. Red Hat take those particular problems behind the scene and to solve their customers better, by the way. So that's where Red Hat used to fund the CentOS. And that's where once the IBM acquisition happened, now IBM is all enterprise companies, right? So that's where what they have done is they made it as a CentOS as a development stream and RHEL is a final product. I mean, what that means to you is technically nothing, uh, but however, you will not have a comfort, by the way, right? So. Earlier, CentOS is a final product of Red Hat. Okay, so final product of Red Hat. And that means like 
the final release, the the bug free release has been converted as CentOS. Now actually CentOS is coming as a uh, upstream to Red Hat, by the way. That means after CentOS, uh, the Red Hat is actually coming in. So that means there is a slight discomfort, by the way, in the people that, okay, maybe we are using a buggy version kind of a thing. But initially that, I mean, that friction was there, but I, I don't know somehow it was being, you know, so not that much, um, I mean, not that much in the community again. So people are, again, just started living with it most of the time, but also like CentOS community. Okay, they went now went and actually the CentOS actual community guy. So what he has done is uh, he has, uh, started a, another Linux called as Rocky Linux. So now what he's doing now, again, he's again copying the Red Hat and giving it as a, after Red Hat, he's giving it as a Rocky Linux. And that community again started this. And now this time they are going with a completely, um, completely the, you know, um, open source way only. Like this time, I think the, they're not doing the mistake of how the commitment they did with the Red Hat and all. Now the cost is not involved by the way. So this is completely, they're telling like, you know, bug free, right? So it's basically because Red Hat copy. And this came into picture, okay, which is fine. End of the day, it's all family. It's okay. Just assume that you are working on Red Hat. That's it, okay? Nothing else will change. Only the logos and things like that will change. That also you'll never see most of the time. It's all command line. Okay, fine. So this is what we were discussing yesterday. And we wanted to go with a CentOS to practice, by the way, which is uh, uh, CentOS to practice, by the way. And however, we wanted to use some cloud and uh, you know create the machines. And so that's where I asked everyone to create the cloud machines yesterday. And uh, if you have seen or not, so our... Uh, Templates has been updated. One minute. Yeah. So whoever is joining this particular session, you will see it, you will see the session link to join in two formats. Okay. So one is, uh, this is the format and there's also another format that you will see to join the session as this actually. Right. <clears throat> now, um, in both the places, you will see something like, you know, so this, uh, yeah. So this, uh, okay, this particular, uh, either it is uh, this one, it is showing here in the page. Okay. So the session link, whatever you're joining, if you go down, you'll find out the GitHub or else if you are using another one, so you will find out just below join session you'll find out as all other links kind of thing, right? Okay. Now that is the link that you need to bookmark by the way. So which has all these particular links. Okay. So let me open that. So if you click on any of that one, so which will land you in this particular page only. All right. <clears throat> you'll find the session recordings here. That's, and that's fine. Killer Kodai website is here. Okay, now why, why I'm coming here is, so we wanted to use cloud and I asked you to sign up, every one of you to sign up for the cloud. If you're already having a cloud account, which is AWS cloud, you no need to sign up. If you don't have one, please go ahead and do a sign up when you do the sign up. So here is the AWS sign up video and what is the AWS sign up link and all. Okay, you just give a, give a sign up, complete the sign up and keep it with you. And maybe after two days, we'll try to use that. And until then, we want to practice this particular Linux. So we have a killer coda and that killer coda link is given here. So just open the killer coda. Maybe if you logged out, I think there is an open bug for this guy. I did not logged in. If I try to open it, they'll ask you to log in. If you click on login, maybe you simply use a Google account to log in. After that, it will again land in the main their main main landing page. 
So maybe what you need to do is again go back and just open this once again. It will take you there. And here, so we have two categories, categories in a context of uh, non-privileged work what we do versus privileged work what we do. Non-privileged work I'm considering as a Linux basics. And like I was already mentioning yesterday, Linux basics means don't consider as a basic, intermediate and advanced kind of a thing. So we I'm just, I'm just categorizing that in the context of non-privileged commands versus privileged commands. So privileged commands means like, you know, in Windows also, maybe if you are using a company laptop, you can't go and install every software what you want, right? So that means someone as an administrator will be there who can install some software. Now he's a privileged user. You're a normal user. Okay, that's where a normal user can do some his job on the operating system like a normal user. We'll learn those particular commands, which is needed for our requirement. And after that, privileged things also we'll talk about, which is needed for our requirement. Okay, so let's start with the Linux basics and you click on that and you just need to wait for It did not came immediately. <clears throat> okay, maybe it is a bit slow. That's okay. You just need to wait for this to complete. Whatever it is doing, don't worry. Okay, maybe you'll understand what this command is doing. Maybe in some time when we talk about some topic called as Docker later in our sessions, you will really understand what that command is doing. But for now, don't worry about that. So let it do some job and let come something here. Okay, so now this is going to bring the um, this is going to bring the um, nothing that that command is actually you know so this guy killer quota provides only Ubuntu machines and I'm just doing some work from from my side to get a CentOS machine. Okay, now this is a CentOS nine by the way. Now if you log into any machine by the way you will see you know like this only. Okay, this prompt only you will see. But how can you determine this is a CentOS 8 machine or CentOS 9 machine? Okay. Basically, you can execute one command, but don't worry about this particular command. You just by heart this command. So cat slash etc slash star release. Now, what is this doing? Maybe, maybe today or tomorrow you'll understand what is actually happening. If that command comes today in our learning, you will understand today, or else tomorrow it will definitely come. Now you'll understand this is a CentOS release 9, and everywhere it mentioned there's a red hat Linux, things like that. So like as mentioned, so today, I mean, we were running the latest version by the way, so which is CentOS operating system wiki. I think these guys actually archived this page also, not this wiki, wiki.centos. This is a read-only archived page. Now that's what CentOS 9 stream will be supported until May 2027. Seven and eight is actually done and eight stream, like that means this change, right? I was mentioning. So this become, uh, CentOS stream, by the way. CentOS stream became Red Hat. Okay, that's where we got a stream. Okay, now this is a stream, nine stream. <clears throat> so that's where we are going to learn some Linux here and we're going to proceed from there. Right, this is what we have discussed in the yesterday session. I think enough of introduction. Let's move on with the actual thing that we wanted to do for today. Okay, so just give me one minute. Hey, sorry, I'm back. All right, so let's get it started. And this killer coda, they're going to provide a session for 57, or sorry, 60 minutes only. Okay, but don't worry about anything about it. So we don't worry. 
just one or two days. After that, we'll get onto our own Linux boxes. There won't be any problem. Okay. So let's continue with the actual. Uh, let's get on to the actual commands that we wanted to learn. And yesterday I was already already mentioning how a command should be looking like. A command should be looking, or command would be looking like you're going to have a command. Okay. You're going to have a command. Maybe let me put it here. So you're going to put a command. And it may or may not have options, okay? And it may or may not have some inputs. And all that all depends upon the command, by the way. So whether it is needed or not, the command will let you know. Whether this is also needed or not, the command will let you know. Now, what command you're actually doing and what is the purpose of the purpose, you, I mean, for what requirement you're actually trying to execute this command and that requires some input or not. Now, all these things you have to th think through and then execute the command. Okay, so that is where, okay, so the command might have options, might have some inputs. And these options yesterday I was mentioning about, depends upon the different commands, by the way. So they will provide a hyphen, hyphen, a word. Okay, hyphen, a character, single character, maybe like hyphen C, something like this, hyphen V, hyphen E, something like this, some characters, or hyphen word. Any of the way you will find it out. This all depends upon the person who is making the, this all depends upon the person who is making the command, a developer by the way. So he would have made that particular options. So we just need to use those particular things. A developer in the sense who is sitting in the red hat or whoever it is, the maker of that particular command. So they will provide some options, you will be using it. And always, if you know the command, if you don't know the command also, you go to the internet and find it out. And if you know the command, the options and all, you always maybe start, start searching from the internet, by the way. So that is what uh, I would always <clears throat> tell, by the way. All right. So that's where it is. So that's where it is. Um, it has been discussed in the yesterday session and let's move on with the actual commands. All right, so let's get with the clear code here. Cool, so now let's start executing some commands, but before execute learning some commands, Linux is a new thing to you, right? Maybe that you need to, okay, understand there are certain, uh, I mean, there are slight differences between your Windows and Linux. Now that's where, Okay, so the Linux directory structure versus Windows directory structure, because Windows you know already, so that's where it is easy to compare and let's understand. Now, when you go with the Windows, where is the starting point? Your starting point is C drive all the time. Okay, maybe it is wrapped under this guy, which is my PC. As an icon, it may wrap under my PC as a UI, and inside that they're starting with C drive, D drive and showing you, but if you look at the operating system context, everything is under C drive only. Assume you have only one drive, no partitions extra, nothing like that. Now you want is, um, you know, uh, a C drive. All right, so this is how, okay, your Windows is going to be. That's where, can we consider that as a root point, entry point? Okay, now if I have a tree, by the way, like let's say, now, if I have a tree, so where is it starting, by the way? So is a root, right? So can we consider that language here? Because Linux, we do that, okay? Now, the root of Windows, so assume that somewhere the root here, or this is a base. Now, here the Windows base here is uh, C drive, right? So C drive. Now, in the Linux, by the way, so what we are going to do is we are going to call that as a root directory and we are going to start there as a forward slash. Now the starting point of the Linux is forward slash. Now in the C drive, an operating system is going to give you many files, by the way. They provide document and settings, they provide windows, program files, you know, so users, blah, blah, blah. They provide some directory structure, right? You may not nearly, uh, or you may not never uh, seen those particular things. 
are sorry not saying <laughs> i mean create are those particular things right so I, os is actually trying to create them so that's where linux also comes with a certain directory structure on its own it's all started with a slash under slash you'll find out many many names by the way and in c drive windows is using for some purpose c drive program files is doing some purpose c drive document and settings is doing some purpose now here also every directory is there it is doing for some purpose isn't it so that is how it's a, it's a simple comparison okay now you open c drive windows you may see you know so 100 different directories and essentially we may not really need to know everything correct so that is where it applies to the okay that's where it applies to the linux also every directory which is out there you may not really need to do that okay for an example here i have a windows box now let's say if i just go to the my pc maybe the resolution is not fit Sorry, I'm just trying to get my Windows machine. Okay, I got it. All right. Now, if I go with the C drive, by the way, now you see many directories which is out there. Maybe if I go into Windows, you will see huge number of directories. We may not really knew all these particular things, and we may not be dealing with that, right? And that applies to Linux as well. Necessarily, you need to know about everything. Okay. But however, okay, Linux directory structure is very simpler, by the way, comparing with the Windows. And anyone can maybe, you know, have a glimpse on that. Okay. That is where I have provided, okay, a link at the down. If you really want to, you know, have an understanding, by the way, I provided one link or you can open any link and just read about Linux directory structure. That's okay. Okay. But to start with, that's okay. Okay. So here we are going to start with slash under slash some directory in windows. You have C drives slash and inside that you are actually having uh, some directories, right? So these are the OS level related directories. And in windows, how the, how the software used to be or how the, I mean, how the software used to be is now let's say you're installing some Firefox software. Now that Firefox soft software will go under, let's say C drive program files, and they create one folder called as Firefox and all the files have, will sit there. But Linux also, in some ways it can happen that way, but most of the time it will be like, you know, so install a Firefox, now there is some slash bin, you know, so some files will go there. Slash etc is there, some files will go there. Slash library is there, some files will go there. So that's where Linux has made the directory structure standard and all the files will come inside that. But whereas the Windows approach is, Windows approach is all the software related, all the files related to the software sits in one places. Now both has pros and cons. Okay. We can't say that, you know, this is good. That is good. That is, that is good. Now you have to live with that because we can't debate and switch to Windows, right? So it doesn't make sense, right? So that's where, so Linux behaves this way and we have to stick with that approach. That's okay. But I just want to give you a glimpse on that, you know, how the software installation, when we try to install. So why these directory structures are there. They made a standard directory structure. Now we're asking every software to install their files in these particular locations. Whereas Windows is telling that, okay, I'll give you one location. You create one location, you dump all the files in one location. So that's what Windows is telling to the vendor of making the softwares, whoever makes the softwares. Okay, so that is the slight difference that you will see. And also the next thing is, uh, Windows starts with a backslash. Okay, in Windows, you always see the backslashes, right? So that's where if I go here, now if you just give the path, it is giving C drive colon slash Windows. If I go here, now you can see this. So C drive Windows slash app, app patch. Okay, so like this it is telling. Now Linux is all about forward slash. Linux uses forward slash. That is the difference. Okay, so whereas Unix and Linux, we call it up as using forward slash. And in Linux, we have a root directory where is the path of the any directory starts here, which is called as forward slash. 
like i mentioned it just inspired from a tree only okay they just inspired from tree tree it starts with a root somewhere and that's where they are calling it as a root and that directory also is called as a root directory so this is the place where it is starting and uh, all those files inside that are you know so the branches and stems of that and that's where uh, there is some diagram i have mentioned now you just try to understand so here uh, you have a root directory and inside that you know so some branches and stems of that particular one is some other directories so it's a simple idea of that only so it's a forward slash and inside that you have some sub directories inside that okay the next one is in linux it is preferred not to give you any spaces in the files or folder names whenever you try to create a folder or a directory here we call it as a directory and it's just nothing but a folder again and you don't give any spaces try to consider not to give any spaces while you're creating a folder and all okay so here spaces are not allowed even if you give it it gives it works by the way but it's always confusing and people come from this particular background we don't do that okay so that's where please stick with the same approach and in linux also the files names are case sensitive okay so that meaning you can you can in windows by the way it is not a case sensitive operating system right windows you go there maybe for an example if i try to create a new folder for an example i'll say demo and i'll try to create one more folder which is called as demo which is all capital letters it will never allow me you see that the destination folder already there demo is already there it will never allow you but linux is not that linux is a case sensitive operating system so that means you can create a folder name with small demos and capital characters also you can use it and that's where okay linux is a case sensitive operating system and you always ensure you provide all the lower cases only at least in the file names when you create at least go with the lower cases at least to start with unless until it is needed of creating with some caps and all you don't go with that okay so consider that is a case sensitive windows is not that that's okay all right this is a quite introduction to the windows operating system windows sorry uh, linux uh, operating system comparing with the windows by the way in in windows we are going to have a c drive starting as an entry point so we can consider that as a root point entry point or starting point root of a tree in linux it is a forward slash and there are some directories operating system come up with and uh, yes you can go ahead and create whatever we want but still most of the people align to those directory structures and going forward whenever there is a requirement you will start seeing some different different directories and their purposes and all and if you are really curious by the way so maybe you can spend some 15 20 minutes of time some time and you will be able to find out the information about those particular things i provided one link and feel free to search from anywhere from the internet which is fine okay so that is about introduction to the linux directory structure hoping it is clear any questions please raise your hand otherwise we can proceed or also anything any questions related to the current topic please raise your hand and if anything if anyone has joined today and if you need some other information maybe please park your question till end of the session and we'll do that yeah Hi. Yes, Manish. So uh, we are using send OS on Killer Code, right? And I just wanted to know if you're if we are using Mac, can we use the same thing on terminal? This is a browser, by the way. Okay. Your Mac is a different machine. You can't. Okay, so we can use send OS only on Killer Code or any other website. No, whoever offers, you can use it. Okay. Thank you. All right. I don't see any other questions. <clears throat> Moving on. So the first command, what we're going to deal today is 
ls command list files list files and directories in windows you don't need to have this particular problem why because when you open the folder the content is automatically visible here right and maybe you can just go to this you can change this view also maybe you can say that you know i want to view it in a extra large icons you can get okay view in a simple list you want you get that like this you get it right or maybe you want to view in a okay so small icons you can see that like this you can do that like you know you don't really need to list the files by the way but linux is a command line operating system so it doesn't show anything there so unless until you ask for it okay now you are somewhere in the system okay you are somewhere in the system but that does not really matter okay and even in fact actually i would suggest to okay skip this particular one and i'll go with the next one by the way so since we talked about the directories and all let's cover this first so there's a directory navigation now we talked about the system the directory structure by the way but where are you you logged into the system but where are you okay whenever you log into the system you will be taken to your home directory by the way whatever is your home directory so the system allocates one directory to you okay in windows also they allocate one directory to us right so what is the directory that allocated to me is basically is if i go to this documents um, i mean it's actually not giving it properly if i really go to the users and i'm i may be administrator directly so these are the folders like documents now this is the path I have, they have given to me c drive users and my username is the my username is the uh, administrator and that's where c drive users administrator that is the location it has allocated me and whenever you know um, whenever i go to my home directory at least this little little ui thing right so a little tricky so that's where in linux actually okay whenever is also allocates on directory to you at least windows allocated one directory and whenever you log into any machine linux machine by default they'll take you to your linux home directory now i'm a root user so now the prompt will help me which user i'm in and the pwd can help me okay pwd can help us okay so the pwd is a is a command which will help you in identifying the present working directory and where are you okay so that will be that will be done by um so that will be done by a pwd command i'm just giving the output i'm under slash there's a directory called as root under slash slash is what the main one okay under slash i'm under a directory called as root by the way right if you compare with the, the structure under slash okay you are under a root directory so maybe it is not mentioned here that's okay there's a root directory which is allocated as a user and we are actually into that user so he's an administrator and he have the one root is an administrator in linux in windows administrator is a keyword that he himself is an administrator in linux we call that as a root user the main user okay so again inspired from the same thing the main stem is called as a root right they're going with the same keyword again now there is a root user and there is a root directory okay root directory is nothing but forward slash this is quite new thing maybe often quite often until you get comfort with the linux it may be a little confusing but that's okay it will go away while you are with this particular operating system for a few more days right so root directory is called as forward slash but there is a root user he's a admin guy in the operating system now when i log into this system i'm actually getting a admin account so that's where this is the one and pwd it is giving me slash root all right now if you want to change from one directory to another directory you can always go with by using next command called as cd command so cd like you can go with any of these directories like you know like let's say one of the directory i have given is slash bin slash bin sorry spelling mistake slash bin where are you how do you identify pwd and actually in my prompt rather than every time executing a pwd i'm actually helping the prompt here itself you can identify where are you also you know to really go and execute the pwd all the time right so necessarily you need to know which directory you are in in windows you open any folder okay so on the top it is telling you where are you by the way it's easy to understand so why not my terminal also if possible yes it is possible so that's where we just inspire and 
you know, keep the directory paths also generally for comfort purpose. Okay, we do this. All right, and this also is uh, sometimes is very useful. By the way, it's easy to identify which location you are in and avoid some mistakes of executing some commands. By the way, right? So in wrong location, you execute some commands like removing the files and all. Instead of removing some other location bin files, you may be removed in some other bin files. We are screwed. Okay, so that is where um, this is. So that is where this is uh, um, a real useful option when you actually keep it on the prompt. So we are doing that. All right, otherwise PWD is a command which can help you. Now let's say if I go to CD slash home, PWD, you are in slash home. Now you go with CD slash var slash log. Now P, sorry, PWD, you can see slash var slash log. Now you can go from one location to another location by using CD command if you know the path. If you don't know the path, we'll talk about how do you discover the things, okay? So, but however, if you know the path, you give that particular path and you go inside that. Okay, so that's about a CD command. And CD command also, like now let's say wherever you are in, by the way, um, you just execute a simple CD command. Now I'm going to give just CD enter. Now, so far I'm giving you CD some path, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give CD just enter. Now if I give PWD, I'll be coming automatically to my home directory. CD command can reset back to your home directory if you just give you simply CD. Okay, so that is how it is. And one more option is CD dot dot. Okay, now let's say I'm under slash, under that I'm under root. Now I want to go to my parent directory. Who is my parent directory? Slash. Or else if I go to CD slash var slash log, now which directory I'm in? Log directory. And who is my parent? Slash var, var is my parent. To var who is the parent? Slash is the parent. Right, it's like C drive, Windows, Windows is a C drive Windows, and inside that some other folder. Now some other folder will have the parent as anyhow we have here only, right? Now you see this, you're in the documents. Who is the parent directory? C drive users administrator is a parent directory. Now if you go to parent directory administrator, now who is the parent directory? C drive users is the parent directory. Now if I go into the parent directory, okay, so then C drive users. Now who is the parent directory here? C drive is a parent directory. Okay, like this, you can go to your parent directory easily, right? So here also you can do that and it's quite often useful command as well. So CD dot dot takes you to your parent directory. The dot dot denotes parent directory. CD dot dot PWD. Okay, so this is how, um, okay, this is how it is actually going to work. So now PWD and CD command. PWD to identify in which location you are in and cd command to switch from one location to change the directory from one location to another location you have a, a cd command and in cd command three options we talked about cd some path you give, you go to that path just a cd enter it takes to your home directory and cd dot dot takes to your parent directory so these three scenarios is widely used and we want it Right, any questions? Hi, I'm Adabal. Yes. So in Windows, we have the, I mean, we can, we can log in with multiple users, right? And can we do same way in the Linux as well? Yeah, Windows is a multi, single session multiple users operating system okay so that means okay. one user can have only one login though multiple users can log in linux is a multi-user multi-session operating system oh, okay got it thank you any questions Seems a good audience. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, Raghu. Yeah. Actually, like uh, comparing uh, Windows and uh, uh, Linux, we saw that uh, when you install any program, so in Windows, like the program will be in one place, right? 
yeah one but here in a different different directories right so, <clears throat> how do we ensure that uh, some other user will not disturb our program because like it, it uh, the, so like uh, one has to know like uh, where where the program is installed and where at all in what are the directory city is sitting in right and by mistake if somebody uh, deletes a file so how do we ensure uh, our program is or not disturbed so you'll have a track of who has deleted what okay log, complete log okay yes these are server operating systems every action you perform will get tracked in the operating systems okay where do we see that we'll talk about that later it's okay anything related to cd and pwd please go ahead no cool now whenever i go any location windows is is showing me the, all the files right so if i have observed or not so if i go to cd windows automatically it is showing all the files but linux if i am using cd command i am going inside it's not showing me anything right yes and that's where and actually it is also achievable by you can also show automatically but yeah so let's not go too much extreme as well okay and it may not be useful all the time also right so that's where okay let's stick to but just keep in your mind that you know so it is possible in linux also when you actually cd to a location automatically i can show some files which is out there it's highly possible okay um, so now whenever i go to any location by the way or wherever location i am in and if i want to find out the list of files which are out there so then command is here is ls command so ls is a command which will help us in identifying what all the list of files are there so now you can see this the list of files now these may not be files also these may be some directories also so how do you identify okay how do you identify so that is where um, one of the option will come into picture here is uh, ls hyphen cap small l okay ls hyphen l will help you in identifying if it is actually a d starting with a d that's a directory that means that's a folder okay let me go to my home home directory so pwd and do ls and ls hyphen l so now you can see this there are hyphens it is starting with a hyphen that means this is a file if it starts with a d that's a directory okay that is a, a directory so windows also showing the same thing right so view format now you can see this in the view by the way you are you are seeing that you know so this is telling file folder and it's automatically writing that information otherwise it is telling what type of file it is in linux you have only two generally considering but actually you have total seven but as a user for you it is going to be two the rest of five belongs to operating system and some other time you may end up okay so looking for other files also but it's a pretty rare, rare case i would say uh, generally like you have total seven types of files in the operating system so which two we are talking generally and which is a normal file and as well as a folder directory okay so here that's where okay so here you can see this uh, hyphen which is uh, uh, the hyphen which is telling that it is a normal file and whereas the d okay so ls hyphen l of like let's say slash if i give it is starting with a d and the d is nothing but a directory by the way all right that is how it is going to be now ls command is giving you some list of files and also ls hyphen capital a can show you some bit more files by the way and how come these are more files and how come those are not showing earlier and what are those files these files are hidden files these files are hidden files even applies in windows also right windows also you have hidden files and folders so now i have c drive windows if i go to the view on the top okay show is it yeah so you can see this the c drive and uh, now on the view i go there so here you can see this hidden items is not shown if i just choose that hidden item i got one directory one folder i mean one folder two folders and one file it came 
So these extra came by the way. So showing if I remove that, so those are not showing. If I give that, those are coming. This one, this one program data, this one. Linux also have the hidden files. And in Linux, by the way, the hidden files are basically starts with dot, dot direct, sorry, dot character. Either it is a file or directory does not really matter. If it is starting with a dot character, then that is a hidden file. Now LS hyphen L will not show you LS hyphen capital A, which is showing the hidden files and small L, which is to show you this format. You can combine those two options now, hyphen L easy for understanding hyphen A to show the hidden files, L to give you the you know list by the way. Now you can see these, all these are files by the way. So file is coming with hyphen. And you can see this dot SSH is a hidden directory and it is D by the way. Okay. So the LS command and it's two options, which is hyphen capital A and small L are really useful options. Okay. For our day to day activities, LS to list the files and LS hyphen small L to list the files in a long list, which is you'll get more information about those files and hyphen capital A to show you the hidden files as well. Okay, now that means you navigate to any location. You can see those files now. Okay, for an example, I go to cd slash where. I don't know anything what is there inside here. I do ls. Okay, now I'll understand. Okay, okay, I have to go to log by the way. Now I'll go and give cd log. Right, so undo ls. Now you can see those files, right? So some files. If there is another directory here, okay, you go inside that. And usually in the operating system, this ls comes in a color by the way. So that means cd dot dot ls hyphen hyphen color it usually comes in this color maybe in this machine i disabled or it's coming as a disabled option but usually that blue color denotes a directory by the way in the operating system and that colors also can be modified okay but however no one touches those colors like it's general purpose and that blue color is actually considered as a directory okay or else there's also one more option you can identify which is a file or directory hyphen capital f if you give, it automatically tells that you know so which is a directory which is ending with forward slash. If you have slash at the ending, that's a directory. These are all different ways. How can you identify these are, this is the directory. One is easy way is LS hyphen L. Okay, you can identify which is a directory or this is very too much information and things like that. You can use LS hyphen capital F. Okay, you can use do this, but any operating system you generally log in. Okay, here in this OS it is not coming, but usually LS will be enabled with some color. So. You just go with the blue color considering that as a directory. Now that log is a directory, I'll give CD log. Simple, easy to understand, right? So this is what is about the LS command, right? Clear, any questions? Yeah, hello, Raghu. Um, how yes. are you? You are right. Yeah, so my question is so um the the nine real nine version that is where the ls dash capital F comes in. Or has it been in other previous versions? This oh, no, these are all basic, these are there from 30 years back from there. Oh, okay. Nothing new. Whatever we're talking is nothing new. And okay. there is nothing new with specific to the version we will be talking. It's almost like same only. Every operating system is same. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, Raghu. Yeah. Yeah, actually I have a question like uh, without using that ls command after doing cd we can use tab tab right for seeing which there are multiple file. ways one job you can always do it in multiple ways okay okay out of that we talk about some way and i feel like that is maybe the best way and i'm telling you and again okay. yes you're right by the way. ll also right what's the difference between ll and ls there is no such command called as ll ll no okay That's yeah, right. and this is where I was telling from yesterday. Before using any command, you need to know about that command. So don't blindly use that. I know LL is working for you. Okay, that doesn't mean that LL was there. Okay, so okay. LS is the command actually. 
اوكي Um, hello. Yeah. So um, you typed a command like ls space minus l space uh, forward slash. And what does that command do? So it's an input, right? You're providing ls will give you the files, which is here. But I want ls of some other directory. I give you ls slash. But you typed something like ls space minus l and after that forward slash. Minus l means I want to see the long list. This format. Is a format you are getting right? Okay. So multiple columns you are getting. LS will give you the. So form. what is the? Okay, so what does the forward slash will do? You said like giving input to that file or something. Yeah, we talked about that, right? So Linux commands will be having like this. You'll have a command, and you'll have an options, and you'll have some inputs. Now LS command, I'm telling. Okay, I don't want the current location files. I want some other location files. I'm giving that. So I want some other location files. You really no need to go to there and do LS. You can sit here only and do that. Okay, then. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Rabu. Yeah. So I just heard that LL is not a command. That's what you said, right? But I use in Red Hat LL that is almost similar to LS. No such, again, I'm telling the same answer. There's no such command called as LL. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but they, are, they will give you some aliases. Okay. Oh, now, okay. let's say I'm lazy enough to deal with LS hyphen L all the time. So, what I can do is operating system help, help me dealing with mm -hmm. LL is equal to, I can write my own command alias. Now, I can start using LL. Oh, okay. There is no such okay. command called as LL. And that's where I'm telling you before using the command, understand it. Okay, at least it's 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 time for everyone to okay, whoever knows Linux, it's a rethink of what you're doing. Yesterday I was clearly calling it out. A lot of people do the things around Linux subconsciously. Okay. So that is a danger thing, by the way. So you shouldn't execute any command subconsciously, it's just like that. When you're executing, what is this? Okay, you need to know about his history and what it does, by the way. So then you should be using it. Yeah, so adopt that practice and the things will be a bit mature the way you will be doing. Yeah, that's okay. It's a, it's not a command. LL is an alias. Thank you, Doctor. Right. And that is where again, so if I go with alias and if I go with LS, by the way, so what would they would have done to give the colors? LS will not give colors unless until you pass an option, color. Now, if I start doing LS, I'll see all the colors, by the way. Because LS, I already alias to LS hyphen hyphen color, right? So that is where it starts working. And that's what I was mentioning. If you go with that regular operating system, like someone was you know, telling that, you know, they don't know that they are using the LL command, but it's giving the long list of us because it's coming as an alias from the operating system only. From the vendor only, it is shipping. Like no one is customizing in between. From the vendor itself, they are shipping. The same way for LS command also, they'll ship the command uh, ls with ls hyphen hyphen color okay so that's how it is that's fine oh, hi Google. yeah uh, here when we are listing with ls hyphen capital f uh, the forward uh, forward slash is representing a folder and at the rate is representing a directory right not that direct slash is representing the directory Okay. So here slash uh, represents that. Okay, slash is directory and at the rate is something else. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. If you're interested, so I would suggest you to start searching for uh, you know, so seven types of Linux operating, uh, seven types of files, seven types of files in Linux. Okay. You search for that, you get seven types of files. So one of the files is at the rate. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Thank but you. we are restricting it. Yesterday I was talking about ROI, return on investment, by the way. So the more you invest on the Linux, it's good only, but not the best way. We have many things to do. So, but we'll just need to move on with the things what we need. Everything, if you start looking in now, the LS command itself, like have how many options? LS hyphen hyphen help if I give, 
Now LS command itself, you will end up with, uh, you know, so a week of time to learn all the options, <laughs> which you don't want it. Okay. Yeah, so okay. yeah, whenever the requirement comes in, you start exploring it, but otherwise uh, it's okay. That's fine. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Hello, Rago. Yeah. Yeah, what's the difference between uh, directors and uh, subdirectors? Because we can use uh, ls minus r also to get subdirectors. Yes. Yeah, what's the difference between subdirectors and subdirectors? Well, what is the difference there? You're only telling, right? So it's a directory and subdirectory. It's a simple English only. Yeah. Okay. So simply, in simple English, by the way. So now here is a subdirectory view is also there in Windows. Now yeah. here you are getting only these folder files. Okay. If you want to get under folder files also. What you will do is you will expand that. You will see that view by the way. That's it. It's just a view. Okay. There's no difference there. Cool. So moving on with the next one. So how many commands we learned so far? Three commands. Okay. So CD, or basically we started with PWD, CD, and LS command, right? Next. <clears throat> so I'll change this order. Basically, I'll, I'll try to keep this as a first. The next one is, okay, fine, I want to create some files and directories. How do I do that? Okay. So in Windows, how do you do that? If you want to create a file, by the way, how do you do that? So maybe... I just go to my home directory, let's say. I'll right click. I mean, wherever it is, you can create it. That's okay. But I just went to my directory and click on new and you just choose like, you know, so text document, the plain text file, you take it up and you choose this and I'll give like, you know, so demo something like that. Okay. The file has been created. Okay. Now. This file size is zero file size. You see this, this file size is telling us zero KB. There's no, no content inside that. After creating this file, you go and uh, okay, open this file and start editing the content if you want, right? Otherwise it's a zero KB file. Now going back to the Linux also, it is same only. So now if you try to create a file, basically here we're talking about is uh, the same approach. When you create some file, you want an empty file, then the touch command here you have is, so CD command will bring me to my home directory and uh, so let's go. Okay, here it is. Now I want to create some touch file.txt. Okay. To ls, there's a file.txt. Now, how can you tell that this is an empty file? ls hyphen l can help you. So the size of the file, you can see it is as zero. The size of the file represents it's just zero. That means it's a zero KB file, zero bytes file empty file. So touch command will create an empty file. And also you can create multiple files at the same time by using touch command as well. Touch sample all the three files, enter. Okay, now lsfnl, all the files are empty files. And a very important takeaway, a very, very important takeaway. Linux, there is no file extension. Linux, there is no file extension. You create them for our understanding purpose. I created the file as a sample without no extension. I created notes.txt, that means my understanding is a text file. And lambda.py, it's a Python file. Okay, it's just only for understanding purpose, I have done that. But for operating system, it does not matter. And it, in fact, actually, this is not an extension, it's a complete file name. Lambda.py together is a file name. But in Windows, it's different, by the way. Windows here, demo is a file name. But if I just go and give file name extensions view, by the way, .txt is an extension, by the way. And based on this extension, it will try to open an application. Okay. But in Linux, by the way, so what we do here is we will just try to, okay, open the files with a command all the time. So that's where we don't have to bother about extensions at all. And Linux doesn't require any extensions. Yet we'll create extensions. Still, we create extensions because easy to understand, right? Why do we need to you know, worry about our using a feature? So it's good only. So we'll always try to create some files with some extensions to have an understanding. Okay, so what are we doing that? Okay, things like that. And that is where, okay, so we are going to get 
file creation, by the way, and you can create some empty files. Later, we talk about how do you create a files with some content also. That's okay. But now it's an empty file. Now, how do you create a directory windows also right click new folder It's an empty folder only right new folder maybe if i just give demo so it's an empty folder right so the same way here here also in linux when you create some directory is going to be an empty folder only so that's where mkdir is a command to create a directory mkdir demo okay so now ls now you can see this this demo is a directory and it's an empty directory only. LS demo, if I give, it doesn't have anything. Just an empty directory. Same like Windows, Linux also, it is same. Empty directories. And the very important takeaway, one more takeaway here is, in Linux OS, the file names are case sensitive, meaning the demo is a different one, and capital D here you are having is a different folder. In Windows, both are same, right? So that means MKDIR, capital D demo, it is possible. Now you can see this, this is different. This is different. But Windows, it is not possible. I already shown you that in the starting, right? Okay, so this is how we are going to deal with creating your files and directories. Any questions? Yeah, so you spoke about the that um, Linux, it has no file extension. I mean, I just want a better clarification about some of those um, files that we download and we install on our system that has extension either like zip or tar. I mean, these are extensions from your download. Can you explain that in relative to Linux? The answer is same, right? So Linux does not bother about extensions. You are having those extensions for your comfort. That's it. Right. Yeah. So you're giving .py because by easily to understand that's a Python file, you're giving .py. You're giving .txt easy, easily by seeing that file as dot, is a text file by giving .txt. Now, if you give .zip, easily you can understand that as a .zip. For OS, it does not really matter. OS doesn't support it. You are creating, you are organizing it for your comfort. Right? Okay, thank you. Okay. So two more com commands came to our bucket. One is dodge command and mkdir. So we're comparing with Windows and uh, you know learning this and hoping they're not <laughs> too much fast. Okay, so maybe first time it's lit it's little discomfort. That's okay. But once you start making the hands on, okay, you can be able to manage it. All right, <clears throat> so what is the next one? Removing files. If I want to remove a file, maybe I created one file, I want to remove one file. So then rm command will come into picture. Now rm lambda dot py. So it is asking, hey, do you want to remove that uh, empty file? Answer is yes, why? Why is fine? Yes or no? It is not asking yes or no, but yeah, it is y or n you can give. Why means you are removing it. N means you are not removing it. I just gave N, so that's where the lambda.py is still there. Okay. Now RM lambda.py and Y enter. Now I remove that file. Now you see this, there is no lambda.py. All right. So that's how I can remove one file. Now, now let's say you got some board about like, you know, so prompting this yes or no, you don't like it. You know, you're deleting it. Anyhow, you'll provide yes. Okay, so why do we need to have that? Then probably what you can do is rm-f sample. So if I give hyphen f option, 
it will just override that SR no and consider that as yes, force option and you do that. Okay. So, but be careful by the way. So when you actually delete the file, retrieving the content is almost not possible in Linux. Okay. So that's where be very careful when you actually do the things because especially you work on the live machines, right? So that's what we're talking about. So, right. So that means uh, you are actually dealing with the, you know, up web applications, which is used by the customer, the live environment. If you have done something wrong, okay. So like remove some content and it is not retrievable. There's a risk involved. Okay. So there's a mitigation risk mitigation. How do you avoid it on all? And is a secondary thing, by the way, first of all, prevention is better than cure. First you prevent it. Okay. So later we can talk about how do we mitigate, right? So that's how, okay. So just make sure you always try to, you know, you're removing it cautiously. Okay. You're removing the right thing. That's it. And the same way you can remove the directories by using RM command, but with, with the same with another option called as RM hyphen R. Okay. So if you want to remove a directory RM demo, it will not be able to do that. Whereas um whereas i wanted to remove eight by using rm if not demo okay so again it is asking yes or no so no i'm giving you want a force option rm hyphen r that's it you are able to remove it demo is gone so this is how you can remove the directories also rm command to remove the file only but hyphen r option to it can remove the directory also and hyphen f option but for the both the files and directories hyphen f option is a forceful option but always keep in mind when you remove the things you will lose the content you will not have anything to retrieve it back at all okay so be cautious all right that's about rm removing any questions Mm, hey Raghu, can you yeah. hear me? Yes. Okay, I have one question not related to this. Um, it's part so... of question if it is not related. Okay, fine. End of session. Okay. Cool. The next is... Uh... How do you copy? Windows, how do you copy? Right click copy. Right, so right click copy and maybe you wherever the folder you want to go in and just go there and maybe paste it, something like that, right? So the same way Linux also, you can copy file or directory, both the things by using same command, which is CP. Maybe this session is ending in four minutes. I'll try to refresh this. Okay, refresh the page so that I'll get a new session. I'll not lose things in between. Mm, why this guy is not giving immediately? And if I hit enter, <laughs> it is working. Interesting. I'll take a look later. But yeah, it, it's supposed to come automatically. So let's go to our content in the meantime. Remove. Now copy. If I want to copy, um, uh, okay, okay. You need to give me two minutes to fix this problem.
just two minutes huh? i actually been doing actually i'm using the issue over here is uh, what is the issue happening here is So what is the issue actually happened here is if I run this, so what is the error if you see that? The error is telling flat form problem, okay? Now my Mac machine is, uh, okay, is not an Intel processor, okay? Hardware difference is there. Now based on the processor, okay? So the things will change by the way. So that is the thing. And while the session is going on, so someone was asking about, or actually not someone, by the way. I was talking about alias, right? LS command, color and all. So I was adding that color option in between. I have it in another laptop. I'm just running it, sorry. Almost there. <clears throat> oh, this image is already there. Let me refresh again. <clears throat> Still same problem. Just might, let me log out, log in back. I pushed a few seconds ago only, it should work. Okay. All right. I'll just go with the eight for now. Does not really matter for us at this point of time. <clears throat> I'll I'll take a look on that.
So it doesn't really matter. So which OS I'm in there, uh, these commands are same. So for now, let's move on with the eight one. <clears throat> so we are in the topic of the last two topics, by the way. So copy and uh, move, I think we'll wrap it up for today. All right. <clears throat> The next one, which we wanted to talk about here is a copy the files. See, why are we talking about all these particular things is end of the day, end of the day, you will, end of the day, you will not, I mean, end of the day, what we're doing, dealing with is, so we have to deal with some softwares running inside the operating system. So that's what we're talk, talking about, right? Uh, here it is. Okay. So here ensure we release the software smoothly and, you know, ensure the app running without any issues for doing this, by the way, you need to do some things on the server. So that's where some configurations of the, you know, softwares and all, all those particular things, uh, you know, we are going to use it. And for there, uh, you know, you might require to copy some place, one place to, I mean, maybe you downloaded the code from the given by the developer, you copied it, you need to copy it or keep it in some place. And all these things will be there. Okay, so that's where CP command is also is needed, by the way. Now, what all we do, we actually go with uh, um, whatever we do is we actually go with uh, the actual use case of our DevOps things only. Okay, so that is a context. And yeah, let's come to the line. Now, how do you copy, uh, you know, how do you copy a file in the same place, by the way, maybe? is let's say I have CP uh, original case.cfg. Maybe I want to give new.cfg, something like that. Okay, now do ls, there is a new.cfg came in. Now you copy it in the same location, but that won't you do, right? You don't usually do it, but still I copied in the same location. But if I want to copy to some other location, for an example, if I give slash TMP, now this get copied into slash TMP. Now ls of slash TMP, you will see that uh, original case.cfg is also there in TMP location, right? So that's how you're going to do that. So how do you copy to some other location? Now, whereas if I have a directory, let's say MKDAR demo and uh, touch demo slash new.txt file, now ls demo, so you have new.txt. Now CP demo to, let's say slash TMP location somewhere I'm copying, it is telling that, hey, I can't copy it. Can you use CP hyphen R, hyphen R not specified? So if I go with same RM hyphen R, you have CP hyphen R. So CP hyphen R, now this directory has been copied to some other location. LSO slash TMP, now the demo is actually here. All right, so this is how we are going to um, deal with the copy of the file to a location, copy of a directory also to the location, some other location. All right, so this is how we are going to deal with that, right? I just quickly go with the next command also, and I'll take the questions. So CP, you give the source and destination, the source file and the destination location you provide, it will take you to that location. And the next one here is renaming your file or moving your file, both does by same command. Now you want to cut paste, or rename, both the things is same by the way. Now let's say I wanted to just cut this file new.cfg, okay, new.cfg to slash TMP. Now LS by the way, there is no new.cfg here. Then that's been, what happened to that? It's actually moved to slash TMP, moved, cut paste. You're doing a, a cut paste operation. Okay. Whereas you can also use MV command. If you're not given your target as a path, you just give the same another file name, it will rename that file. For example, ls. And if I have MV, Nakonda ks.cfg. Now let's say we give demo.cfg. Now I did not give any path. I'm giving a file name. So then Linux will understand that okay, or MV will understand this is okay. He, he needs a rename. So then it's going to do a rename, ls. Now you got demo.cfg that has been renamed. Now it all depends upon the target location. So if you are actually giving a directory, it will move to the directory. If you're actually not giving a directory path, you're giving a file name, it will just rename it. 
that is how it is going to be and the same thing applies to directory also there is a there is a demo directory here so mv demo to demo one something like that now you did a rename or mv demo one to slash tmp now you look given a location then what it will do it will move that cut paste slash tmp that's where you don't have it anymore all right so that is all we have with the uh, today's session by the way so what all the commands we wanted to talk about so just let's quickly recall and rm command cp command and mb command is the things total eight commands we have learned in today's session let's see if we can cover one more editor i thought of we can do it tomorrow no problem that's okay let's not hurry yeah any questions please go ahead Yeah. Yeah. Is there any recycle bin option in Linux? Just like in Windows, we have a recycle bin option, right? No, means... you don't. Ah, okay. If we accidentally delete any files or folder in Linux, we can't get them. So, if you accidentally delete in the recycle bin, will you get it? No. Same. Okay. So here deleting means you have shift delete, right? We can't, I mean, Here you have only one option. The file will be permanently deleted, right? Right. Without moving to recycle bin. Yeah. Actually, in Windows, delete is not delete unless until you delete in recycle bin. Hmm. That's what I'm asking about shift delete means we will. That means it's not a delete, right? You are comparing a wrong operation. Windows okay. right click delete is not doing a delete, by the way. And whereas RM command is actual delete, you are comparing two different wrong things here. The means here RM means where shift delete in is equal to RM here. Huh? No, you are you are comparing two wrong things. Windows right click delete is not a delete button. No, no, not right click delete. If we shift and delete, then it doesn't delete it without going to recycle bin. Okay. Yes, then that is a right comparison. So delete is actually shift delete, not delete. Okay. So, so in the next so delete, 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 yeah. just moving the reference to some other folder. Okay. Keeping that. It's not really deleting, by the way. That's why it's a wrong comparison. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's what I I'm asking about shift delete. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah. My question was uh, with the operating systems, you know, uh, you said uh, Windows is single session and multi-user uh, uh, thing, right? And uh, you said uh, Linux is uh, multi-user and uh, multi-sessions. So that means uh, whenever a, uh, for every user, there will be a, a complete different uh, environment set up uh, in Linux. Like uh, uh, the user has... Um, their own install softwares or you know all the configuration settings is that what uh, you mean by multi user and multi session no so that means multiple users can log in in multiple sessions in windows multiple users can log in but only single session they can have mm. right so can so you give you ever tried of... let's say you're a basker user did you try to open two sessions to the same windows box no we cannot so that's a single session operating system but linux you can always make same user can make multiple connections to the server it's a multi-session operating system mm, okay uh, so giving an example is uh, uh, is feasible, uh, Raghu? Like it's a small um, thing? No, I did or, not. Um... I mean, you asked for multi-user, multi-session. I already explained, right? Is that not your okay. question? Yeah, that's my question. I just, uh, I'm just trying to, you know, uh, uh, think how it, I'm just trying to think, you know, how it works. Windows, I, I know I use Windows, so I got that point. But Linux, uh, uh, 
can you uh, show like it as, as an example or uh, or i can yeah search mm-hmm. it on my own there is no question you asked by the way to explain you mm, okay so you asked for basically what is the difference between linux i mean did you understand what is multi session i mentioned right yeah that's what that, that's what, yeah maybe i did not understand yeah full, uh, fully you know what is uh, i mean what is a session so session is basically multi- you windows rdp to a one machine mm, okay no you did you did you ever did rdp to a machine remote desktop to a machine remote desktop uh like vm virtual machine no no how do you access a windows box by the way not your desktop windows server uh to winscp some tools no winscp is for linux okay that's where I, i'm not sure where your class <laughs> and you're saying that windows i know by the way but did you ever rdp okay, to maybe you are you are talking in terms of uh, server uh, servers uh, server side uh, not from the operating system side i mean actual both are, both are same only you want to access a windows desktop remotely hey sorry you are unmute uh, when you actually want to access a windows remotely by the way there is a protocol called as remote desktop okay mm, correct so only one user can log in even your desktop also applies the same thing right so that means only one user can log in if other user want to log in either you you have to log out and another user can log in right mm, desktop also, right so that's correct. a simple session operating system but i think you are comparing in the desktop level but not right correct. So yeah so correct. remote servers remote machines oh, okay so okay, that's correct. where i can i just came to here then show you so now here i have i can make one session to that machine another session also to that machine so now i made two connections to that server so this is not possible in windows that's what is multi session okay got it okay thank you yeah no i uh, i a little bit noise sorry for that so one question so whatever we are using my code it's not uh, from the, your computer right is we are pulling all, all the files already files from the server right your voice is not clear uh, you may not did not got the complete context of your question yeah uh, sorry for that it's very noisy but what i'm trying to ask you is whatever the files we which we are trying to find on the killer code using the commands they are showing already files uh, they don't exist so the, what we are operating so it's from the uh, server right that's not from your system already files exist or something it's showing when we uh, use the ls command or whatever commands correct correct and and also when we are using the uh when I, when you are opening it says open to it's not saying send to os yes are, are we using ubuntu or send to os here because okay. you said in the beginning both are different yeah, both are different only we are using send os only not ubuntu okay that that's all Uh, uh, are we in this uh, training session? Are we going to cover Python and uh, Ansible Java? So you need to deal with a holistic project, by the way. So Ansible Java will not come into picture uh, unless until you go to some sort of administration activity. If you are a Linux admin kind of a guy, so Tower makes sense. You are a DevOps engineer, not joining as a Tower, by the way. and python will be there in the syllabus yes yeah, because like uh, we're doing uh, deployments uh, you know uh, for uh, uh, using uh, ansible tower that's what um, currently in yeah, my can, that's what i'm telling you can do that so but there are deployment tools exclusively does the deployment strategies 
Now, when you go with the, so I'm using a Go CD here. So this is a deployment tool, by the way. Okay. And uh, also we have Argo CD in the syllabus, right? So these are deployment tools, native deployment tools, but Ansible Tower is not a deployment tool, by the way. It's a configuration management management tool. Okay. So you can still use that. That's what you can still use that, but it's a wrong tool for the wrong approach. So it is for different purposes. So still using it for a wrong approach, you'll not get a great outcome, by the way. So that's where, from that particular context, we don't really require tower, by the way. Okay, you mean to say like uh, this Ansible tower is completely for the infrastructure related? Uh, yes, it's an infra tool. It's, a, it's, a, it's only to run Ansible, by the way, right? Okay. It's not about, it doesn't deal with any strategies of your application. Okay. So that's where you need a deployment tool exclusively. Okay. You see this, this deployment tool, you can see this. So I have four yeah. environments. I have Dave environment. I have, uh, I have, uh, you know, so uh, QA environment here. It is a UAT environment. This is a production environment, right? Okay. Now my build is successful. Okay. Then I'll be, sorry, my deployment is successful in the lower environment. That's where I'll move on to the next environment. Now in Ansible, can you get this view and control? No. Ansible tower. So right. will, you guide, will you able to guide me like uh, where can I learn my um, Ansible tower if required? You know, to other tools? You're, learning, you're learning Ansible already, right? Tower is only one UI, you click one button, that's it. What is that? Okay. So we are going to cover Ansible in this part of right? I think the ML language. Yeah, yeah. What is that? You're dealing with the main one. Only the UI you click on. That's it. Is a tower. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Maybe if people will start practicing that killer quota thing. Uh, I'll fix that. Maybe I'm not sure. Why it's taking time, but yeah, so I'll try to fix that and you can use it. And also one more thing, uh, I have added uh, uh, other information as well in that particular GitHub web page. So starting from today, you can have a lab session also. Okay, the timings and the link is mentioned here. So if you're in other time zones other than Indian time, so please try to look into your timings. But otherwise, if you have any question, okay, while you're doing the practice, during this time, you can join and you can ask for any question. Okay, all right. Yes, Himaja. Yeah, yeah, actually it is out of question, but yeah, uh, so just now you are showing that Go dashboard, right? It almost similar to the Azure DevOps pipelines, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Right. Uh, when we talk about lab sessions, so like, during our regular class, you will be uh, asking us to do something uh, like after the class. And if you have any questions, like we'll be clarifying there, right? Correct. Is that the thing or like uh, during the lab session, like you will be assigning something? No, no, no. I'll not assign anything. So whatever I do in the session, I'm taking a greenfield approach. Okay. That means whatever I take in this, whatever I do in this session, you try to replicate in your lab. So today okay. I teach you some commands in killer coda. That means you open killer coda and practice them. And while you do that, any question, you can reach there. Okay, we can reach there, look, only if we have any questions or if we're interested yeah, yeah. to uh, yeah. see like what others are doing, right? Correct, correct. It's not mandatory. Okay, got that. All right. I don't see any other hands. Final call, any other questions? Hi, Raghu. Yeah. So uh, after one week, uh, are you going to change the timing? No, timing's all same. Nothing changed. Hello. Links will change. Hello. I'm audible, Raghu. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, you've shown that uh, you have pasted the link. Uh, Hello, Raghu. 
killer coda where you can see the find that link hello yeah can you share please so if you are uh, so based on the template of joining session you are you are joining there are two templates by the way and uh, if your template of click, click to the join session is actually showing here like this then you'll find out the github link here or else if your join session link is showing like this then there is an all other links here so open that and this link will open okay. and all the details okay, are... okay. Got it. Got it. thank you So the uh, in the lab sessions, the timings, it shows us 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. IST. Is it like we can join any hour or it's yes. like eight hours? Anytime. Anytime, okay. Yes, I can. Not able to hear you, Akhil. Hey, can you hear me now? Yes. I was wondering what happens in, in the March 10th when the daylight saving turns off the timing of this regular session in the evening, will it change as well? Yeah, for you it will change. For me it will not change, right? So Correct, yeah, for you it won't yeah. change. So you will move to 8.30. 8.30, yes. okay. Yes, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. All right. Cool. Um, I don't see any more hands. Thanks, everyone. See you in tomorrow then. Bye. Good day. Good night.